I recently made a video on an incredible discovery. In fact, the world's biggest discovery of minerals that can power electric vehicle batteries, not just electric vehicle batteries, but also all the batteries we need to run the entire world on renewable energy for the next 100 or 200 years. However, there's just one big problem, or so we thought. That problem we thought was the fact that all of these minerals are located thousands of kilometers below the sea. Now, that is a challenge which can be overcome with engineering. However, another big problem has just arisen, and it's one that nobody expected. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back to everyone else. What is going on with these manganese potatoes. Well, first of all, we know this area under the sea. It's claimed by the mining company that has the rights to it and by the International Seabed Authority, which represents 19 companies from China, France, Germany, India, Japan, Russia, and South Korea, that there is enough minerals here. In fact, more than the rest of the world combined. This is an insane source. And this all sounded amazing. Now, um, some of you sent me emails saying this will cause a devastation to the ocean floor if we mine it. And you presented your case. And I understand where you're coming from. There's some pros and cons. Now, obviously, the mining companies and these governments disagree with those statements. Now, I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Very interesting to hear that, though, from some of you. However, I don't believe that will stop these 19 countries. I mean, we're talking about Russia and China here. This is a literal gold rush. In fact, it's not a gold rush. This is a, a quadrillion dollar rush. It is. There is so much money lying just sitting on the floor of the ocean. Now, what is sitting on the floor of the ocean? In fact, it barely needs to be mined. There's literal potatoes, the size of potatoes, nuggets, full of incredibly precious metals, that are just sitting there like potatoes that are just sitting on the ground. You can literally pick them up. It's incredible. Now these nodules contain manganese. And what do we know about manganese? Well, we know that manganese is something that everyone is about to want. Everyone, I mean in a big way. Why do we know this? Lithium ion phosphate batteries are already the most commercially viable battery used in the world for anything and everything. They've overtaken ternary batteries. They've overtaken batteries using nickel and cobalt. And lithium ion phosphate batteries work way better when they have some manganese in the battery. Adding manganese increases the energy density by around 10 to 15%, with companies saying they can get even more out of this process. Tesla's new battery packs are said to have manganese in the lithium ion phosphate battery. And those packs have already come out in rival companies from China. So this is a real thing. We're about to see a rush for manganese in a huge way. Because why? Because it is so incredibly effective at powering the most popular battery type in the world and, make, and improving it drastically. Manganese nodules, also known as polymetallic nodules, can be found in all of the Earth's oceans. They come in sizes ranging from that of a potato to a head of lettuce and are composed largely of iron and manganese oxides. Large concentrations of these sea potatoes can be found in the Pacific Ocean and Indian Oceans at depths of up to 21,300 feet. That's 6,500 meters or not that far off the height of Mount Everest. Mount Everest is 8,800. And it's a lot deeper than where those dudes recently died. What was there, five or six of them trying to visit the Titanic? The nodules are considered the most important metal deposits in the sea due to their high content of iron, titanium, copper, nickel, and cobalt. Elements important to the production of every battery type used en masse currently to computers, to smartphones, to batteries, to, yeah, you name it. We need that stuff. And these companies are rushing to get it. So this is the drawn the interest of electronics and steelmaking industries of entire countries, and they all want to get down there as fast as they can. But uh, this could be a bit of an issue if you want to keep your brain in your head if you don't want to die. Why do I say that? It's nothing to do with drowning. 
Deep sea mining companies have found they can collect the nodules by using a hydraulic machine similar to a potato harvester. Seriously, it actually looks like a potato harvester. Recently, the International Seabed Authority has issued permits to 19 companies from the countries I listed before, China, France, Germany, India, Japan, Russia, and South Korea. However, a new study published in Scientific says that the possible industrial mining of the nodules, which are worth probably billions of dollars, can take 3 million years to form and could power every battery pack in the world, could have a significant impact on the ecosystem, but also could jeopardize the health of miners, processors, and even end users due to the nodules high levels of radioactivity. Now, no one realized this and they all thought they were onto something big. They started investing into mining them, harvesting them, getting their potato harvesters to suck those things up off the bottom of the ocean. And all of a sudden, this has thrown a big spanner in the works. The research shows that as they grow, the nodules accumulate high levels of uranium radioisotopes which emit large amounts of alpha radiation as they decay. While external exposure to alpha radiation is not as dangerous as exposure to some other forms of radiation, the researchers suggest that nodule processing can lead to inhalation of nodule dust or fines and radon gas, as well as exposure to high concentrations of other radioactive substances. In a press release, Jessica V. Holtz, PhD, the study's first author and a biogeochemist, at the Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine Research at the Alfred Wegener Institute in Germany, explained that the team focused on two particular radioactive substances, thorium-230 and radium-226. These were found in nodules retrieved from expeditions carried out in the clarion clipperton zone in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and Mexico. Based on previous studies, it was already known that the nodule's outer layer contains natural radioactive substances like thorium-230 and radium-226, which have accumulated at the nodule surface from seawater over long periods of time. However, their values had never been considered in the context of radiation protection legislation, she said. Our study shows that in the outer layer of these extremely slowly growing nodules, certain substances which emit alpha radiation can exceed limits found in radiation protection legislation a hundred to a thousand fold. Repeated measurements of the nodules at a layer showed more than five bequerels per gram, a quantity of radioactive material in which one nucleus decays per second of radium-226. This is in contrast to Germany's limit of 0.01. You can see it's miles above Germany's limits. Now, what are the limits in those other countries, such as Russia and China? Uh, I would say they might be more flexible, even though the people mining them uh, might end up growing an extra arm or an extra leg or something. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen. They're more likely to die than that happening. Sabine Kasten, PhD, one of the study authors, said that the research focus on deep sea mining could influence ecosystems in the Pacific Ocean as well. Our new study on the radioactivity of manganese nodules demonstrates that beyond the consequences for marine ecosystems, there could be human health hazards in connection with mining and processing of manganese nodules. And the use of products manufactured on, the, on this basis, it's imperative that this aspect is considered in all future planning. Geochemist and co-author of the study, Walter Guybert, said, that despite expecting high radioactivity levels, the team was quite surprised by the results. In particular, the high accumulation rate of the radioactive noble gas radon was a new finding. As such, handling manganese nodules without protective gear can pose a health risk. Now, there seems to be images on the internet of people actually holding these things. So, I hope they're okay. Or if they're still alive today, if you are still alive today and you're watching this video, let us know in the comments, please. Some radioactive substances could accumulate in the nodules products during and after processing, such as actinidum-227 in the rare earth elements, said the researchers. The results show that the outer parts of the nodules naturally reach values for certain radioactive substances that exceed some, or if not all, legal safety limits. We found values that exceed by far what we normally measure in natural samples. We also found that the nodules release a lot of the radioactive gas radon. So this builds up in high values where the nodules 
are kept in enclosed spaces. So given this, given we, what we now know about these nodules, should this mining continue? Should we be thinking that this is really a good source for the world's battery supply? According to Guybert, we're not the first species that has actually used them. A diverse and abundant assemblage of deep sea organisms lives on or near the manganese nodules and the crusts. And they have been doing so for a long time and probably need them more than we do. Now, I'm not sure how this is possible for these creatures to live, but obviously it is. I think we humans can learn a lot from manganese nodules about extreme microbial life forms and about past ocean conditions. Otherwise, I think in the long term, humanity has most benefits from leaving the manganese nodules where they are right now. We don't really know their function in the ocean chemistry yet, but considering their abundance and the vast area they cover, I believe they're a critical component of the Earth system in the long term that modulates seafloor ocean exchange. So this obviously raises the question, says interesting engineering, of the possible negative consequences for marine ecosystems as well as for humans from extensive mining of manganese nodules. Now, Guy Bitt went on to say this, the ecosystem that lives on and around the nodules is permanently destroyed by mining. We know they take millions of years to grow, so recovery in this form won't happen. Regarding the consequences for humans though, this is the maybe the most interesting part. He said, we don't even know, except that handling the nodules should be done carefully, not only because of the radionuclides that they contain, and release, but also to avoid exposure to the heavy metals that are the reason for mining them in the first place. So will mining of this resource go ahead? Well, to be honest, they're worth billions of dollars when you put them all together. Mining them is so incredibly easy. And I think it's probably a good chance that countries like China and Russia won't really care about this research. They'll simply go on ahead and figure out a way to make it happen. Now, that's what I suspect. I'm not saying that's what should happen, but it's what probably will happen. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.